it's my great privilege to introduce my friend uh, viraj tyagi <clears throat> and i completely echo what mahindra said earlier uh, thank you for joining us at such short notice a quick uh, round of <clears throat> a, a quick bit of introduction of uh, viraj he is the ceo of ega foundation a philanthropic mission dedicated to improving the ease of living in india viraj believes that digital transformation is not as much about digitizing and automation as it is about humans improving the quality of life removing barriers and creating trust between various actors prior to joining the impact sector viraj was an entrepreneur and corporate leader with wide ranging experience in building large businesses in europe and india and now malini and i would like to invite viraj to make his opening comments uh, viraj i'd like you to commence with sharing with us what does ega foundation do and what is the digit platform and how does the digit platform help cities and municipal bodies perform better over to you viraj thank you prabhat uh, and it's a pleasure to be here uh, and uh, good to meet everybody uh, uh, thank you for inviting me i could not resist uh, at the last minute when i saw the the kind of title of the conference ease of living because i think uh, uh, our mission actually officially says uh, you know we are a philanthropic mission to enable ease of living at, at scale and with inclusivity by using the you know uh, power of technology in ecosystem so it's a, it's a pleasure to be here uh, very briefly about uh, ega foundation we are a 19 year old foundation started in 2003 and we've been at it we've gone through three or five or six pivots so far and prabhat has been you know as a part of tata trust been a integral part of it uh, i think at at a, at, at a very uh, basic level uh we are invested in making sure the benefits of you know digital technology are experienced uh, by the citizens as what i call inclusive transparent and easy to access services you know there's no reason you know what we have seen in banking or what we have seen in other sectors should not be available to citizens that is one part second part is the whole capacity of the system to act and service citizens right because you cannot just create demand so we believe very strongly you know working with what we call samaj sarkar and bazaar which is working with the government the communities and the markets to actually create conditions for what what is called ppp or you know uh, you know participation for them to work together to build the capacity of the system to deliver those transparent easy to use you know uh, accessible services which means from a frontline employee in a urban local body to a commissioner to a kunal kumar who is a smart city mission director you know they they increase their capacities to use the either data or the tools which are there so if it's a both supply and demand side in a traditional sense you guys are all you know from from the from the private sector you'll understand it that unless you increase the capacity of the supply side you cannot really deliver good services so that's the uh, so that's that's what we are about uh, and scale is very important i want to talk about that a bit you know typically in a in a market sense we understand scale as number of transactions and uh, you know uh, build revenue and stuff like that for us scale means you know and we use the term population scale which means that the last person in the smallest urban local body should have the same level of service that somebody living in kolaba has that's what scale means that it should not you know all these you know ease of living municipal index you know digital services should not just be about top 100 top 500 cities india has 4500 towns and cities they should have the same level of you know tools technology and uh, you know uh, services available which are available to bigger cities so that's very important to us you know unless unless we feel you know we have heard you know and that that was our mission till about one year ago that we wanted to be in 2000 cities by 2020 uh, and and have we achieved it but i think that's a very important dimension for us that it, it's just not about building a very key software and it works in three cities that's 
you know that's that's not acceptable and the other thing is is federated you know whatever we do you can do it at a ward level you can do it at a, at a ulb level you can do it at a district level you can do it at a state level or you can do it at a national level so it's basically you can federate based on the kind of system that you're running so in addition to technology there are two things we do uh, you know uh, that helps us kind of move things forward. one is we do a lot of work with the market actors to ensure that people in the market participate in uh, in ppp way with them with the government building solutions and deploying the digit platform so it's open source free to use we are a philanthropy we don't make any revenue we have you know uh, people like tata trust who are you know believing in us and giving us grants to build this kind of a infrastructure so that is one second is we also do a lot of work with the government uh, at various levels to create enabling policies because sometimes i think those are also important because unless they're enabling policy you cannot do things at scale and a great example of of that work is the collaboration we had with niua and smart city mission over the last four years where we build a digital blueprint for urban use of technology in urban and that finally led to the creation of national urban digital mission last year and now uh, our platform digit is actually uh, kind of uh, uh, been adopted by uh, niua as a national platform so this is what egov does and the platform is is a is one part of it digit is basically open source platform which has both building blocks and applications so from in a city paying your taxes applying for your you know uh, water connection building plan approval trade license complaints uh, municipal accounting full workflow we have you know th 35 40 applications but the important thing is it is built so that other people can build on top of it you know i was in punjab 3 weeks ago and i went to this small town called khatarpur because we saw in our data they have the highest number of online transactions in punjab more than ludhiana amritsar it turns out they have they have adopted the platform to be used by the uh, internet cafes to collect taxes so i think you need to give unless you can solve problems locally so that's the flexibility you have when you use a platform i'll pause here and uh, you know we can take more questions so so viraj this is malini here uh thanks very much and you know been reading up about egov and the fantastic work that you've been doing so so quite a few questions jumped to mind so so i i you know so hope you'll indulge me a couple of questions uh the first is that you know you've been working with uh, with quite a few states so which are the states that you've already started working with and a corollary to that is that are you working in maharashtra and what are your thoughts on working in you know big cities like say mumbai and pune where there's huge population and the need for these services is already there and uh, and well established so we actively uh, you know uttarakhand punjab uh, west bengal uh, andhra pradesh we were very like almost 7 year old implementation running there in andhra pradesh uh, haryana we just started work uh, northeast states uh, you know we've been working with them uh, those are the states Uh, we are actively engaged with and then now with this national urban digital mission the niua team is engaging with more and more states right kind of onboarding them great uh, maharashtra unfortunately we have done work in nagpur long ago uh, i think, see but uh, uh, but i think we haven't done any work with maharashtra for the last 5 6 years i see kind of because uh, we don't participate in rfps ourselves but basically our partners participate right what our partners uh, to kind of uh, you know uh, deliver right and and i was just you know you were talking about you know the technology and the digital platform so how does it work so for example already for example you know i live in pune and the pune municipal corporation also offers a lot of services through a digital platform so how do you propose to blend the two or you know so as you said you have a platform on which you, others can mount uh, you know so their their own uh, uh, programs so how would you blend the two together that's a very good question and i think one of the things we believe in is we are not there is no point replacing systems you have to integrate and that's why when you have a open source uh, platform it becomes much more easier because the standards are defined apis are defined right you can actually link systems quite easily right Whereas if you do a point to point connection let's say the property tax system of pune has to talk to the 
water system of pune right it was very hard because these are you know monolithic system which are difficult very difficult to connect them right so there are two two approaches to this one is you can integrate at a data level mm-hmm. because a lot of times the issue in the city is the siloed data as a commissioner right and work out a, a, a house i'm giving water connection to or or have they paid their power tax or not right or you have to physically right. check it right? right or you want to get a view of employment in the city through number of trade license and everything you don't have the data so i think one is you can integrate it at a data level mm-hmm. other is so the, the way the platform works is the core kernel of it is essentially a uh, workflow and a data exchange right applications can easily be integrated on top of it in fact punjab is doing that right now a lot of applications they're integrating with digits so that you know it's all a the data kind of is readable across various uh, kind of services that the consumers are consuming mm-hmm. and we do a lot of uh, we have almost like 1100 documents on how tos because it's very important people to if you do things at scale it cannot be dependent on us right there are a lot of uh, you know if you could go to a digit website there are a lot of things if you want to set it up you want to integrate you need to uh, integrate a payment banks into the system how do you do that right. so we do a lot of uh, you know enablement of the ecosystem to uh, kind of uh, for 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 them to make it easy to to integrate right. that's fantastic so even like you said smaller towns and cities can also you know sort of engage using the backbone of of the platforms that you have created excellent viraj you you mentioned about um, seven or eight states where you've had um, the experience of working if you were to pick up any one state uh, as as the one which is where uh, the digit platform has actually worked well Uh, both in the sense of uh, multiple services acceptance by the citizens active participation which one would that be and why would you rate it that way i, I think uh, i would say punjab and minister of defense we did uh, minister of defense was yesterday uh, the raksha mantri uh, mr rajnath singh was there on the one year celebration of you know each harmony that program is called which is using digit and what they've done in one year is really remarkable so i think both of them have been a really great uh, kind of implementations in their own way uh, punjab i think what was very impressive was how they were able to you know it's a great story and some day you should have uh, ajoy sharma to explain it who's the who's the ceo of pmidc punjab municipal infrastructure development board essentially they were going to do a rfp in a classical way of getting a cots product or something which was going to cost them 200 crore plus and they got talking to us you know ajoy himself evaluated our platform and everything and finally we signed a non commercial mou and within 90 days we had 100 urban local bodies up and running wonderful typically these are multi year programs you know which kind of go on and on and on and in the first 3 years they only spent 7 crore rupees wow because they build their own capacity we train them we enable them even now they have a 30 member team in government which is managing the platform so that's a great story of what i call speed at scale <laughs> that's a nice term and then there was something about integrating it with whatsapp and all that right that's right so then we then it became a innovation ground for us we thought why would people have to download an app why should we make it why should we make it really easy you know and that's the advantage of platform you can give the same experience in multiple channels and then one and a half years ago we started working on a whatsapp chatbot it's called mseva chatbot where you can say you just say hi you say hi you say this is my phone number it will list your properties and say i want my property tax this is your property tax you can pay through that you can raise a complaint you can pay your water bill you can apply for things and i think because they had the uh, you know capacity in the state to absorb these things so it's a great example of state building their own capacity and doing such wonderful things actually they won the last month they were the national e governance award national mm-hmm. award for e governance for this program so, so this is a this is a great story of uh, uh partnership and how technology can actually bolster state capacity absolutely yeah. but which also begs the question sorry malni I'll, i'll just quickly finish that <clears throat> uh, this also begs the question that if there was a Uh, state government entity which was kind of anticipating to spend 200 crores and 
uh, an extended period of time for the implementation. And finally, if the whole thing was kind of wrapped up within three odd months for a spend of seven crores, I think this, this, this cannot be you know, repeated only in a forum like this. Mm -hmm. This is something which should be tom tommed and talked about that there are entities and technologies and people who can bring about both scale and speed and cost reduction in, in such a dramatic fashion. Absolutely, absolutely. I think I completely agree with. You. I think we don't do a good enough job of. You know. No, and I, and I think the the user too doesn't do it, which is uh, rather unfortunate. Correct. Yeah, I, I think I'll just add to that that maybe and there's Mahindra Bhai, you know, so over here as well. Maybe this is something that the IMC could take forward. Uh, as an initiative that we should encourage at least you know introduce uh, you know so sort of this whole concept and egov to uh, you know the maharashtra state government in whichever cities they can find uh, linkages i think it would be really useful for our citizens across the state i would love to do that i think yeah and uh, you're you're uh, muted mahindra bhai you're muted yeah so uh, Marini, you're right. Uh, we have uh, the president of IMC, Mr. Juzar Khorakhiwala on with us. Juzar, are you listening to us? The, the objective of this conference is to, you know, collate all these new ideas, the new suggestions that we are getting. Right. At the end of we will work with a, with a white paper and also a list of suggestions and we put at the managing committee and the board of Indian Merchants Chamber and see how many of them can be taken forward, you know, and how. So thank you for suggesting in previous sessions also we had that. And Mr. Sivanandan, good afternoon to you. We are running a bit late, my apologies. Uh, so please bear with us for a while. Carry on, uh, Prabhat. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm just picking up a question from the audience, uh, uh, Viraj. Uh, clearly, even in your introduction, uh, we mentioned saying that it's not only technology, it's many other pieces. Uh, but if one were to clear, look, look at specifically the ease of living and municipal government governance, then what are some of the other critical uh, parameters uh, along with technology, which you think can actually uh, help raise standards of ease of living in urban India? Well, I think as I as I keep joking, you cannot deliver water over internet. So I think ultimately, I think the service delivery has to be physical. You know, there is a very strong, uh, you know, uh, you know, having enough water, having enough electricity. You know, it's it's great that you can do it online, but ultimately you need to have those basics in place. I think in in the context of the work we do, I, we find that there are two things which are very important. One is the orientation on service delivery of the of the state or the or the city because i think sometimes we forget you know uh, in fact i was reading going through the M uh, mpi report and the ui report i did not find service delivery as a uh, you know uh, as, as a parameter that you know mm -hmm. how easy it is for you to access your gum i mean people are you know struggling you know they have to travel 20 kilometers to go an office and get something done right so I think that whole idea of having accessible, transparent, and uh, you know, easy to use service is very important. I mean, specifically, what we have found is, you know, things like, uh, you know, Andhra has done a fabulous job of doorstep delivery. Hmm. So they run this program where they have almost 40,000 volunteers and every ward has five or six volunteers which get an honorarium and they go door to door people who cannot visit offices or they're not online. You know, fact is that, and I keep saying digital delivery doesn't mean digital channels. Digital delivery means it is trustworthy, it is irrecutable, and it is transparent. But you can do it on the, you know, ULB window. Somebody can come to your house and say, sir, this is your property tax. Do you, you have we have raised the complaint, it's been solved, right? So I think giving people access is very important. Mm -hmm. And it's not assume that everybody is living in Bangalore or Bombay and they all have mobile phones. So that's important. Yeah. Second thing is, I think speed. You know, let's say building plan approval. You know, it's a process which is fraught with non-transparency, and people are trying to build a house; they don't get a permission. In Koi Code, by using a you know what we what we call a EDCR, which is open source, 
where you don't have to apply any manual intervention you you kind of submit your uh, uh, kind of drawing and it automatically evaluates it against the rules and tells you it's approved or why it's not approved the average time to approve an application went from 107 days to 7 days mm. that's really impressive yeah yeah i mean so that's the kind of thing what, you know things like you know uh, having a uh, what i call uh, charter for citizens mm. these are the kind of things we do in a non tech where we work with a lot of states to say please issue a charter tell them how long it's going to take they are happy to wait but tell them na how correct. long it's going to take correct correct i think this whole thing on you know giving them a good experience so that they participate more that yeah. is, that's how engagement goes up otherwise people just say i don't want to deal if this 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 is too hard for me correct so so prabhat if you permit viraj i had a couple of questions jumping to mind immediately which is you know you mentioned very importantly that you know apart from the technology you also need to be able to communicate uh, you know the 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 access points that are available already to citizens what comes to mind is one of course you know so mobile apps and and you know so ease of access to all that but there are a lot of senior citizens for example who either don't have access or do not understand really how to uh, uh, you know so how to access this uh, you know so this technology for their use so what could we do about that and the second question that comes to mind and you know mr shivanandan is there uh, security in terms of uh, you know you know so the the incidents of fraud that is taking place these days uh, also so how do we tackle those two questions and those two issues so i think the first i think uh, my short answer is you have to give multiple channels and and yeah. the the paradigm has to be channel of choice not channel we think is right for for correct. a citizen correct i think for example uttarakhand has a very good job of running camps mm -hmm. in the peak property tax payment season they'll actually put camps in all the localities the corporate right. has Put the camps and people can come come and pay pay there. Andhra Pradesh does doorstep delivery. They have these volunteers. Right. Punjab does a very good job of having all these correspondents, mm -hmm. Airtel Bank or a internet cafe, right. which basically can collect on their behalf. So job of the platform is to enable multiple channels to plug in. Right. The same trusted and you know uh, uh, you know uh, transparent manner. Right. So I think channels are very important and being respectful to. where people are and go and meet them there rather than saying you come where i am and use this funky you know <laughs> channel something uh, uh and on the on the on the whole thing about you know security this is something which is very very critical because i think and that's where the design of the platform is very important i think you know we have spent a lot of time both on security and privacy mm -hmm. so typically a lot of data gets collected in various forms and everything right we have tried to make it completely minimal whatever personal data needs to be uh, collected mm -hmm. and the security is you know the kind of tools we use is what you know people like amazon and flipkart so it uses the latest technology that all these you know facebooks and netflix that uh, use so that nobody can hack into the system easily right that's reassuring thank you uh Mahendra, doing a time check. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, Mahendra is muted right now. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, Viraj uh, Malini and I would like to extend our grateful thanks to you, and uh, all strength to your arms. I I know the early period, the kind of battles that you fought. with all the tendering processes that were happening now that uh, <clears throat> uh, you know niua is is kind of adopted this and is and is uh, making the cause easier we'll only hope that uh, you grow quickly even come to maharashtra because uh, people like us also need a platform citizens of this yeah. part of the country also need a platform of this nature yeah. and uh, hopefully you could grow to Uh, tackling many other similar citizen based issues and why only in india correct the, the world is the oyster for you absolutely thank I, you I, in fact uh, on, on that note we've just uh, launched a sanitation mission last month in odisha which is basically starting with the uh, fecal sludge management again digitizing the whole thing and we uh, with our health mission 
we've gone to uh, five countries uh, in last uh, five months to help them uh, run their covid vaccination program so you know uh, i think uh, as they say in hindi aapke muh mein ghee shakkar so thank you so much for saying that and you know uh, and and thank you uh, prabhat uh, sure. a real uh, friend and a backer of us thank you so much so before i let you go viraj uh, i would like to personally uh, thank you once again on behalf of the entire imc and ease of living committee uh, i'm sure most of you will agree that this was another uh, great uh, this you know a lot of good suggestions that we came and we learned how technology can help us scale up the problems of society yes and this precisely is happening you know because during covid some of the companies that have progressed a lot in terms of their own turnover and acquiring a large number of customers it has all happened because of the technology i'll tell you my own experience i chair fino payment bank and we are a completely digital bank and during covid you know we could take the service of banking being an essential service to the doorstep of people only because of technology and we could scale it up a lot of other uh, solutions for that so with that can we have a, a round of applause for viraj 